Greetings and welcome to Mount Olympus. I am Hercules Invictus and today on Sword and Sandal Cinema, I'm proud to present The Many Faces of Hercules with Brian Walker. Greetings and welcome, Brian. How are you today? I am well, Hercules. How are you doing? I'm very happy you've chosen one of my uh, uh, great motivators in Peplum as your focus for today, or at least partially. And you know what? Uh, just in um, you know surfing around the internet for the last few days, um, you know looking for information, um, there are a lot of Alan Steele fans out there. They're, they're a very dedicated group. Um, you know, as dedicated as as any other actors fans are, really. Um, a lot, lots of love for Alan Steele. I have uh, several uh, Sword and Sandal Cinema uh, Facebook groups. And Alan Steele is up there in terms of numbers in with the top three. Uh, the other really? two, wow. the, the top one is Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger, uh, followed by uh, Steve Reeves. Uh, and then uh -huh. it's uh, Alan Steele in terms of uh, numbers. You know, sometimes not being number one is a good place to be. You know, well, it is because you get people discovering you, you or, or your work, I should say, uh, you know, all the time. And it's you're something new. That, that's kind of cool. I, I, I think I've always been an Alan Steele fan. I like all the peplums, even the really bad ones. Uh, I, I enjoy the genre and it's uh, motivated me to stay focused on fitness and to work out. So it's, it's had a very positive effect on my life. But something about uh, Sergio Chiani, a.k.a. Alan Steele, he was just he, he had this attitude that carried over into all his appearances in Hercules. It was like a, a lightheartedness. Uh, regardless of how serious the uh, situation uh, became. And uh, just like uh, I looked at Reg Park as like my idol in terms of physicality, and mm. I looked at, uh, now I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his name, uh, but the person who played Hercules and Jason and the Argonauts, Nigel Green. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. Who accomplished mm. it on attitude alone without even the pretense of having a, um, a muscular. That's, a, that's real acting, if you ask me. Yes. You know, if you've got the attitude, if you can sell it, it doesn't matter what you look So Alan Steele consistently sold it and he had his own like little quality that he added uh, to it. And uh, I really enjoyed his movies, especially the humorous ones, like uh, uh, the inadvertently humorous uh, Hercules Against the Moon Men. And then the, <laughs> the really humorous uh, um, uh, Hercules Returns, which is based on Samson's Mighty Challenge. Yes. And you know what? Um, right before tonight's show, that's exactly what we were watching. I had never seen it before. Um, I, I you know, read about it off and on and decided to watch it tonight. And I love it. I think it's a riot. You know, it, it was produced in Australia um, about 30 years ago. It, it, its uh, um, release date was 1993, so it was probably made around this time of year, it, you know, so it'd be about 30 years old and just brilliant. Um, clearly didn't have a whole lot of money to spend on the project, but it doesn't really show on screen. Uh, it looks wonderfully, you know, very professionally made, well lit. Um, and the script is just beautiful. <laughs> it's, it is so funny. Now, you know, uh, a lot of it uh, you know, by the actors is done in dialect. You know, a, a lot like, uh, you know, What's Up, Tiger? Um, yes. Where, where a few of the people do, you know, all of the dubbing and they, you know, th they, they use different you know, mannerisms and affectations with their voices. And whoever came up with Hercules Returns is just a, a genius because it is so funny. Now, you know, to my ear, um, you know, in, in an ideal, you know, I work at a, you know, a large public university, so I deal with people from all walks of life. You really have to listen to it um, in order to get all the jokes. And, and I yeah. think it's worth, it's, it, I think you have to really do at least two viewings of it, uh, quite that's, honestly. That's very two true. Viewings, two viewings pretty much back to back. Definitely. And if you watch the original Samson's Mighty Challenge, they changed the words from that. And that was a comedy as well. Uh, yes. So they didn't take a serious film and make it into a comedy. They took a comedy and made it into, into another comedy. Well, and um, but the way that you, you the way it looks and the way it's dubbed, I mean, you can make it look like anything. But that That's said, right. a lot of Alan Steele's movies, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them did have a comedic thread running through them. That seemed to be what set him apart uh, from everybody else, really, in my way of thinking. 
you know, St um, Steve Reeves movies were very serious and, and very dramatic, very heavy, you know, um, and the lightheartedness, I think, is a lot of fun. And it even shows in the fight scenes, um, mm -hmm. you know, w when you see the fight scenes, I mean, they're, they're wonderfully choreographed, but it's done tongue in cheek. <laughs> um, and he looks Alan Steele just looks thrilled, you know, when he's going into one of the fight scenes. He looks so happy. Uh, so he, he's clearly enjoying it. Uh, and, and I think that that's just fantastic. You know, if you can uh, you get in there and enjoy it no matter what, uh, I think that's, you know, a good day's work. Yeah, I, th I think so, too. And, 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 and again, it was uh, it was hilarious. I like watching it at least once or twice a year, uh, both uh, the original and the uh, uh, Australian mm. adaptation. Mm -hmm. They're really yeah. finding their own way. Yeah, and when I was doing my research for uh, you know, tonight's podcast, uh, I I pulled out a movie that <clears throat> I haven't seen in a long, probably since I was a kid. And I had a copy of. Um, I had looked on YouTube uh, for a copy of Hercules and the Masked Rider, and the copy I uh, stumbled upon was just it just wasn't very watchable, quite honestly. And so I went into the video vault and found a copy that I didn't, I, I had record of it that we had it. I just didn't know that we had it. Uh, so I found it and watched it and it was on an alpha, which are usually kind of, uh, uh, but this alpha transfer was actually way better than what was on YouTube. I mean, if, uh, you know, hundred percent better. Uh, and I started watching it and you, it, it comes back to you slowly. You know, if it's something you haven't seen for a while, you, you start remembering plot points. But I had forgotten that uh, Alan Steele doesn't really have a whole lot of screen time in Hercules and the Masked Rider, especially mm -hmm. since he's one of the two title characters. <laughs> you, you know, you would think that you know, think. he'd be on, on screen. And he just sort of pops in and pops out almost, almost like a second banana, you know, almost for comic relief. Uh, and, and he appears, you know, at very opportune moments, you know, uh, to, to save the day. Uh, but there again, big smile on his face. He, he's clearly you know, enjoying it. Uh, in some ways, the, the real star of the movie is uh, Mimo Palmara, um, who did, uh, I, I, gosh, almost countless uh, Peplum films in the 50s and 60s. And he and Alan Steele appeared in several films together. Uh, and including Hercules and the Masked Rider, and hopefully this isn't a big spoiler, but Mimo Palmara is the Masked Rider in it. So, as, if I remember correctly, you know, because it's it's been a few days, um, but I'm but, but yes, uh, and it, it's a fun movie. Um, Hercules doesn't have a love interest in it, but the Masked Rider, sort of a Zorro you know, type. Uh, it does, and there's a couple of you know, love story threads running through it, uh, but but Alan doesn't get any love in this one, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm sorry. for him. Well, but but yeah, but maybe that's why he's got a big smile on his face. He doesn't have to do any you know uh, you know heavy dramatics. <laughs> he can just you know pop into a scene and you know, get into three or four fights and then pop back out. That was a movie that I used to find in uh, dollar store bins all the time in in the. Um halcyon days of uh, uh, dollar store, uh, you know, public domain like DVDs. There, were, there was yep. a time uh, for like maybe half a decade or maybe even a decade where if you go into dollar stores, you find all these public domain, hard to find movies uh, for a dollar. And uh, I remember stocking up and I think I have several copies of Hercules and the Mass Rider because they're often paired with another movie. Uh, that's true. Uh, you, you do find that a lot with public domain titles. Well, one title will be paired with 10 different movies, and you, you keep buying the same yes. <laughs> film in order to get the other movie. Uh, I've done that a number of times myself you know, over the years. Um, anyway, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to pair these actors together is that if you look at their careers, they're surprisingly similar. Uh, both sort of uh, pulled themselves up by their bootstraps uh, into, uh, you know, good solid roles in Peplum films. Uh, and both of them did it in the same movie, uh, which is the 1958 Steve Reeves Hercules film. Uh, they're both in it. Um, 
Mimo Palmara is uh, credited. Uh, I don't believe Alan Steele uh, received the screen credit, uh, but um, actually I'm wrong about that. It's Hercules Unchained that they're both in. Uh, okay. Not, not Hercules, I, I apologize. Uh, misremembered that one. Uh, probably should write this stuff down. Uh, it was Hercules Unchained that they're both in. Um, now Mimo Palmara, I believe is in the uh, first Hercules movie as well. In fact, he's in seven of Steve Reeves' movies. Wow. Now, not all of them are, t are uh, could be defined as Peplum, uh, but he's in seven Steve Reeves' movies. He's in a number of movies. He's in several movies with Alan Steele. He did movies with uh, Roger Brown. Well, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but they both had you know, similar career tra trajectories. Um, they both, you know, were sort of uh, in the background at first in Peplum movies, and then kind of moved into second banana status. Uh, uh -huh. if, if if they weren't in a in an antagonist or an adversarial uh, role, uh, oftentimes they were, you know, the best friend of Hercules versus whatever warrior you know, you've um, you, you you titled <laughs> the movie after, um, and uh, both of them, you know. You finally started getting starring roles. Now, for Alan Steele, he got starring roles a little earlier. Uh, you know, th thinks I, I think in part to his physique. I mean, they were both in you know, great shape, but Alan Steele was built more like, I mean, dare I say, Steve Reeves. Yes. Um, than it was the double of Steve Reeves, I think, in uh, in Hercules yes. Unchained. Hercules Unchained. Yeah. Uh, but but he actually he actually gets a couple of uh, I think a scene or two. Uh, in it where you do get to see his face and you don't see him from, you know, from the side or anything like that uh, in the movie. Um, but anyway, uh, they both, you know, entered Peplum uh, you, in, in the same movie, uh, which I think is really cool. And uh, you, uh, Alan Steele, you know, eventually did move into his own starring roles. I mean, he um, you know, supported Steve Reeves in a few films, uh, Brad Harris in, in, in two movies, uh, and um, Mark Forrest, um, Roger Brown. I think he did two movies uh, with Roger Brown. So, um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of similarities between the two careers. One of the, I, I don't know much about the second uh, gentleman, but Alan Steele, I know a great deal about, which means that I know very little about Alan Steele. There is well, that, and that's a tough thing. But there's, it, it's hard to find out much about Alan Steele. Um, Alan well, Steele, well, was, uh, one, I wanted to interview him, and I uh, posted that on the uh, uh, different groups before Sword and Sandal Cinema groups took off. I, I belonged to several of the groups. And uh, one gentleman, uh, an Italian gentleman, uh, was able, he said he knew Alan Steele and that he could arrange that. And mm -hmm. that was within a week of his birthday. And he died during that week. I believe he died on his birthday or the day after the day before his birthday. So that was like a missed opportunity for me uh, because I like saying thank you to people and, and meeting them for affecting my life. I, I was able to say hi to um, uh, the... Uh, I'm having a bad memory day today. Uh, the person who made the uh, animatronics and Jason and the Argonauts. Harryhausen? Harryhausen, yes. And that clip is on YouTube. Uh, somebody put it up. Uh, but I was able to personally thank him for affecting my life in a positive way. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman, whose uh, trauma showed me that anybody can make a movie <laughs> if they wanted to, inspired me to make a movie. So Lloyd was actually on my TV show. He was in my movie. So I got to say... Uh, Thank you to Lloyd. I would have liked to say thank you to like uh, Charles Atlas, to uh, Alan Steele, to Steve Reeves, uh, but I missed them, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so I lost the opportunity to thank them. I did get to thank Mark Forrest, though, so. Well, you know, it, um, it, former actors are an interesting bunch, uh, at least the ones that I've met. Some of them are love uh, the fact that people still remember them, so love it. Um, and it, it kind of blows them away that people still remember. And others really don't want to be bothered. Uh, others would like to be just left alone and you know, living in the Hollywood Hills or wherever it is that they are uh, and just sort of being absorbed back into society. Um, the, the, one, the ones who sort of scream look at me are the ones that are fun. 
um, David Carradine was somebody I got to meet uh, when I had my show. And wow. David, David and I got along very well. Um, and uh, um, he would always do my show if, if I was filming somewhere where he was. Uh, and I got along very well with him. A lot of other people had negative experiences with him. It seems that to most people, really? he was unapproachable. Yeah, that's the impression that I got. Uh, but I never had problems with him. I always got along with him. He, he joked around with me. And uh, uh, he was in a couple of segments. And he did a couple of segues, too, where he was promoting my, my show. <laughs> so uh, I have fond memories of David Carradine. See, if I were you, I would have asked him a million questions about his father. These are quick things that, you know, were in passing. So I was lucky to get the interviews. Yeah. I, even at that, I, I would have been following him down the streets saying, <laughs> why did your father do Astro's Up? <laughs> even though it's one of my favorite movies. I'm not, I, I, if, it, uh, if in my paranormal explorations I come across as ghosts, I will ask him that, I promise. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, um, you, David Carradine, uh, you, uh, uh, had a terrific career in his own right. Um, it, you know, a lot of the Carradines have. Keith Carradine's had a great career. Um, David Carradine. Uh, I mean, it's they've all done pretty well for themselves. But uh, you, out of all of them, I would say that other than their father, John, uh, uh, David Carradine. I was thinking of Robert Carradine. I said David, uh, but but I think of all of them, uh, David Carradine had the most interesting career and. I don't, they all have pretty good acting jobs. I can't say one's better than the other. Um, they, they all seem to be pretty good natural actors. But he did some really interesting lower budget movies. Uh, really interesting ones. Yeah, he did a sword in the uh, sorcery movie. I don't. I think it was called something in the sorceress or sorceress or something like that. Well, well and you, when you and I were kids, you know, kung fu uh, was yes. hugely popular. I mean, it, Gosh, that, that was on TV for what, three or four years, and everybody watched it in school. Everybody saw it. My favorite of his was Circle of Iron, which was a, like a kung fu sort of sorcery film. I really, really liked that. Yeah. Um, and he seemed to have you know, a sense of humor about it all, just like his father. Um, and I think, I think that's amazing. Uh, I mean, it means you're, you, well, yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, he's in one of my favorite movies, Death Race 2000. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, and that that thing's that movie's got an amazing cast. I mean, anything Mary Warren off is in is watchable. If it's just for her, it's watchable. Uh, but but there were you know, some other um, you know fantastic. Well, it's Sylvester Stallone, you know, an early uh, role for him, uh, and some great character actors. Joyce Jameson, you know, has a small role in it. Uh, she used to be in all kinds of stuff in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, I, I remember Carradine, uh, he, he, had, he had made or he was making Kill Bill. So this was mm -hmm. years before it came out, the, the interview. And he, gave, you know, he gave away lots of information about uh, Kill Bill and uh, you know, what that was all about. But, well, and you know, we're, we're lucky that we can find information about you know, actors like you know, Keith Carradine, David Carradine, John Carradine. Uh, but with Alan Steele, golly, I mean, there's just a lock on information. There, there's just not much available. Um, and you, this is somebody who starred in several movies, has a pretty, has a decent fan following, you know, 60 years after the heyday of his career, you know, and there's just, precious little information uh i i've searched the uh interwebs for a long time and there's there's absolutely no personal information at all um i did read uh online in uh a a, a facebook uh fan page that uh they didn't believe alan Steele had ever been married well I mean, it, it, you can't figure out if that's true or not because there's absolutely no information on that. He now, did came, writing and directing and things like that toward really the end of his career. He made a movie about Robin Hood, which is, yes. or at least it was available at one point. They put a link to it in the, the group. Uh, but uh, he's in the writing and the directing credits in that, I believe. I know he did more than just act in it. Right. But when it came to Mimo Palmara, I found all kinds of information. Um, really, a lot of it, a lot of it was in Italian. Um, <laughs> but, 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 yeah, Google Translate. 
you know, I was going to say that's not a problem, you know, uh, and I, I found gobs of information for him, and I kept going and search, I kept going back and searching, it was like, okay, well, let, let's key in Sergio Chiani, uh, obituary actor, and nothing, you would find, just find the most basic of obituaries, you know, born, did this, died, you know, I mean, just nothing in between, no information at all. I think I found somebody did a horoscope chart on him. I, I believe I found that at one point. Then I post, posted a link to it. I don't know if it's still there. He's a, he was a Virgo, uh, so, so I have a couple of theories. But. Okay. <laughs> no, I probably shouldn't. I don't want to offend any Virgos, but uh, I've known several. And, Me too. Uh, well, and, you, you know, on on the surface, they, they look like they've got their shit together. You know, they're cool you know, calm, cool, and collected, and immediately behind that facade, there's just chaos, you know, and that's Virgo. And maybe that's why we At don't least know the ones I know. So, you know, it's hard to tell what was going on in Alan's life. I mean, he, he might have been, you know, having a great time, but you know, <laughs> he just sort of had this you know, sh shroud of normality <laughs> over top of it. And that's unusual. Usually there's like a local paper, at least, that uh, will celebrate a local. Uh, yeah, I mean, or, or sometimes Variety will get a hold of, of something. And you know, the writers at Variety usually know who, you know, where, where fan pockets you know, exist uh, you know, on the Internet. And we'll, we'll essentially you know, write an obituary based on you know, fan input uh, and you know, hopefully reliable sources. Uh, now, but but nothing on Alan's deal. Just you know, no. born, acted in movies, died. Yes. Now the Samson's Mighty Challenge, A.K. Hercules uh, Returns, uh, they have all the peplum heroes in there as, as different actors. Yes. You had Ursus and you had Machiste and you have Samson and, Samson. and so forth. Uh, I would love to see more movies that have uh, all those heroes uh, together. And now that they can uh, basically digitally recreate actors, I think it would be a cool thing if somebody takes all these uh, peplum heroes and, and makes some sort of movie where, where uh, Hercules is, is with Machiste and with the Ursus and, you know, they're doing uh, something, going on a quest with or for Samson or, you know, because we have the technology now to make that believable, more believable than the original films. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd like to see that. Well, you know, and that would actually be interesting. That would be you know, a new a new take on it, a new spin. Um, I mean, yeah, it would be in, in, in inspired by the uh, superhero uh, films over the last what ten years or so, in terms of you know pile, keeping keeping them on. But if you've got some witty byplay, if you've got them you know, with a reason for doing whatever it is they're doing on screen, and and they've got to fight at the beginning, right? Uh, you know, uh, individually and then together, you know, uh, they, they would have to do that in, in that scenario. Uh, that would, that, that's the only way the movie would make sense. And there's enough quests in Greco-Roman mythology to pick something uh, other than the quest for the Golden Fleece that, that hasn't been done and put them all together on that uh, quest uh, where multiple heroes participated in any way. Uh, I think that'd be fun. Who knows? Someday, if I get the technology and the knowledge, or the people to use that technology, might might attempt that. Well, since you're such a uh, you know a huge Alan Steele fan, what's your favorite Alan Steele movie? It's actually the the the, the two or three, uh, depending if you count the remake as a separate movie that I, I mentioned. I love uh, um, Hercules against the Moon Men. That's got to be one of my favorite movies of, of all time. It's fun. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. And then the uh, Samson's Mighty Challenge, J.K. Hercules uh, Returns. I love that movie too. It's just it's, it's just a lot of uh, fun, and uh, I like both takes on it. You know, the the original take and then the re revisited uh, take. So those are my favorite ones. I, I like them. I like his Hercules movies uh, better than his other movies, uh, even though I know that in a lot of those movies originally he was Machiste or or somebody else. He wasn't originally Hercules, but I'm partial to that particular myth. It ties in very much with what my life is all about. So I, I tend to favor those. And I finally found, I think I, I mentioned it to you, Hercules Against Rome. Yes. It, it's finally on YouTube and there are several different versions of it. See, that's one that I don't have a copy of. 
Yeah, I don't either. I had the VHS tape, but my, my VHS tapes were mostly destroyed during a flood. Um, mm. So uh, I don't have it anymore, uh, but it never came out on DVD. Hmm. I, we were uh, right before um, you know, we started tonight's uh, you know, talk, we were watching uh, one of Alan, well, Alan Steele's uh, You're a Spy movie called you know, A for Assassin. Yes. Um, and the, the copy of it on YouTube is not great. You know, uh, it's not black and white so much as light gray and dark gray. <laughs> the, the contrast isn't fantastic. Um, but it, I love your spy films. Uh, yeah, I've never seen one that I thought was dull. Uh, they're always just outrageous fun. Um, and, and I haven't seen uh, this one yet from Alex Steele, but, but I do want to take a look at it. I, I've been putting them in my group, whatever movies of his I could find. I haven't done it in a couple of months because I've expanded all my groups. So I'm a little involved in uh, restructuring. But I used to post anytime I found an Alan Steele movie, I posted in the group uh, through those. Uh, there's like a, 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 a pin section that's mm -hmm. on the top of the page. So if you cl click the arrows, you can get eventually uh, to Alan Steele's uh, movies. I have the A Assassin there and I have a lot of other ones. I haven't finished all those movies, but I finished The Sons of Hercules. I think there's only two of them that are hard to find or the copies are so terrible I didn't put them up. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm trying to put them all there. Uh, so this way they're easy to find and easily easy to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be really handy. Um, you know, for me, uh, if I were going to answer that question, I would probably say um, I, I do love uh, Hercules. And, uh, I, I was impressed with how much uh, that we both enjoyed uh, Hercules and the Masked Rider. It's it's a different take uh, yeah. on it, and, and you, I, I had expectations for a different film. I, I will admit that because uh, I was expecting you know, more Hercules, you know, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but it, it's still a lot of fun to watch. And uh, you know, we, we watched it from beginning to end you know, without a hitch. Uh, not, not a dull moment. Uh, very interesting movie. Pretty well shot. Um, so I enjoyed it. Uh, now, I did notice on IMDb that it got a, what I would call a lower uh, ranking of about 4.3 out of 10, but I think it might have something to do with the fact that um, you maybe somebody maybe some people watched it and were upset with it because you know, Hercules isn't in it as much. You know, maybe that's the issue with it. But I don't think it deserves a 4.3 at all. It's, it's far more entertaining than that. Yeah, I find that I don't really agree with most people's opinion about things. I love I, things that people same here. hate. I hate things that people love, so <laughs> I don't really go, go by that. Uh, most recently with the Marvel movies, I loved Eternals. Uh, it was a very different type of superhero movie, but I, I loved it. And I loved uh, Thor Love and Thunder, which a lot of people <laughs> didn't like uh, either, but that's okay. I enjoyed them both. They were very different, uh, uh, but they dealt with mythical themes, which I'm, you know, I have a predilection for. And uh, so I, I just accept it. You know, I'll, I'll listen to people's feedback, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna agree with it or or uh, resonate with it in any way. Well, I, I know it's not time for retro sci-fi cinema, but what, one of my unpopular likes is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Mm -hmm. um, I love. I know it doesn't have anything to do with the other two, with the first two Halloween movies or, or, or the you know, successive ones, um, but I love it. And you know, that, even, that, even that theme song for Silver Shamrock, you know, Eight More Days to Halloween. <laughs> 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 that always gets lodged into my head in the month of October, and that, that's pretty much all I hear. You know, that monster match, uh, but I love that film, and people poo poo it all the time online. And I'm like, well, gosh, you know, uh, you know, the star of the movie, Tom Atkins, is you know local to, to where I am. He, he's originally from Pittsburgh, and then uh, located back in the area after his career started winding down. Although he, he's still in stuff. And uh, Greg and I had gone out uh, to, to dinner in Pittsburgh. Uh, this has been a number of years ago. So we went to, it was a nice place that we, that we went to. And I, I, I can't remember if we were celebrating something, but uh, Tom Atkins was in what was at the table next to ours and it was his birthday. And um, you know, he was having a bottle of wine and he had a couple of friends there and was having just a great time. 
Yeah, that's always nice when you bump into somebody in, in some place that you don't expect them to. Mm -hmm. Here and in the, you, know, you in his films, you know, he, he has that, you know, that standard broadcast sound, but uh, when he's at home, he sounds like he's from Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's a definite accent in, in, in the Pittsburgh metro area, and he's got it in spades. He was letting it all hang out, too. <laughs> In my late teens and early 20s, uh, Eddie Murphy lived not too far from, uh, you know, uh, Tenafon, mm. lived in Alpine. So it wasn't unusual to bump into him in like diners with his crew. And he had like 20 tough looking guys <laughs> with him wherever he went. Uh, but I, I used to, it wasn't unusual to bump into him in some, some diner uh, every now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, when when uh, we used to go to uh, uh, Hollywood and stuff. So in California every year, uh, which we st unfortunately stopped doing about 10 years ago, uh, we would oftentimes go to the Smokehouse in Burbank. Uh, and the Smokehouse is a terrific restaurant right across the street from Warner Brothers. Been there like since the mid 1940s and just a great place to go in and see who's there. Um, seated next to us once was, at the, they were all drinking pretty heavily. Um, but Moby was at the table, Nat Fax, and there were like three or four other, you know, comedians that, well, I, I don't know why Moby was there, uh, he, he, not a comedian, everybody else was. Um, but it was just kind of interesting, just, you know, wow, you know, kind of cool. I mean, I didn't, we didn't bother, you know, I mean, M M Moby's yeah. not the most interesting person on earth, quite honestly, so. Well, I, didn't, I didn't bother Eddie Murphy either, but it was just cool to have yeah, him. I find your music <laughs> Uh, but uh, just fun, you, and you, that that restaurant just reeks of old Hollywood. You know, if you're ever in Burbank, you gotta go. It is amazing. Uh, I think there were some uh, interiors uh, shot there for The Sopranos uh, because it just has that look. Everything is dark wood and and red leather. You know, um, it, it's a, and the food's really good too. Uh, it's not not just a look, and it's not just history. That place has really good food. Yeah, I lived in a neighborhood in Queens uh, um, near the Brooklyn border. It uh, looked very much like every place you went for a few blocks uh, uh, around the main road looked like uh, someplace out of the Sopranos. <laughs> 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 it felt like it too. Um, yeah, it, it is fun to you, 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 when you are out and about, uh, you, if you are in an area where you might see a celebrity, uh, actually seeing one, it's kind of cool. When Gre this this was probably like thirty years ago, uh, Greg and I were um, we had just flown into Las Vegas. I think it was that day, and we were killing time. We rented a car, and we were killing time because uh, there were a couple uh, other other couple of our friends who were also flying in, but they had taken a later flight, and so we needed to kill some time, um, you know, until their flight landed, so we could go back and pick them up. So we just kind of hit the strip for a while and, and it was really hot that day. And we, we, we got in, into some AC at, I think it was a Williams Sonoma uh, kitchen store. And I, I had picked up something. I don't remember what it was. And I, I was at the cash register and this woman asked me if she could cut ahead because she was in a hurry. I'm like, you know, sure. And I looked up and it was Susan Antar. Oh, wow. And I do mean I had to look up. She... I don't know. She's like six five, six six. <laughs> now, now she was wearing uh, you know, uh, some uh, you know, pumps, you know, so that met, made her you know, even taller. But I was, and just to look at her, even if you didn't know, I, I knew instantly it was Susan and Anton. But if you didn't know that who it was, you would know that she had been somebody at one point or still was. Uh, she just had that she kind of radiated that. I, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, one of the things that happened recently I, I need to share with you is I've discovered a lot of people who are involved with the show are actually into sword and sandal cinema. And oh. they were originally covering other topics. So they were covering like outer space uh, spirituality or uh, ancient Egypt or, you know, different other categories. Uh, so now it turns out they're big uh, peplum aficionados. <laughs> so I've done a couple of segments. Uh, one of our hosts did a segment on Cleopatra with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. And oh. uh, 
another one of our um, hosts that does fitness uh, shows, he's done a couple of uh, segments, Michael Del Russi, and he just did one on Brad uh, Harris. Uh, on this, oh, wow. Uh, that, that, he's he's a really good topic for that. Yes, yes, it was a great topic. So what I'm doing is I'm increasing the uh, Sword and Sandal Cinema Groups. Uh, currently, there are, um, there are two or three during the course of a month. I'm increasing them to three to four. Hmm. So if you'd like uh, to do this more often, just let me know and I'll schedule you on the rotation for the other ones. It'll be similar oh, to the rotation okay. that Ron Carson show, uh, mm -hmm. the Ron Carson's Coliseum. That's only like uh, 15, 20 minutes. So then we have the rest of the hour. So we have it open for rotation. Mm -hmm. So um, right now uh, I'm working on the new rotation for that. Uh, so if you're interested, I'll put you there. And then for the new show, I'm doing, it's all going to be a rotation show with different people all the time. So if you'd oh, like nice. to be on the rotation there, I'll, I'll send you the information. Sure, please do. Please do. I'd appreciate it. Because there's no other Brian Walker and there's no other Brian Strive in theater. You know, you are- uh, Well, well th Brian, there, are other, there are other Brian Walkers, but the drive-in is, <laughs> I'll give you this, it's unique. And, and I, this update, I, I told you back in uh, February, I, I bet it was going to take me a year. And I'm telling you in September, I bet it takes me a year. <laughs> I, I'm just keeping my head above water, you know, with it, with trying to do it in order um, of birth date. Uh, and, you know, you know, I post birthdays, post birthdays every day on the main page of the website. So mm -hmm. I try to have those you know, actors and actresses pages done. Um, and there've been a lot of close calls, <laughs> but um, I, I've been managing to keep my, I'm actually, I think a week or so ahead right now, which is uh, pretty good because I got way behind there in late summer when, um, you know, uh, our, our university, uh, you know, ginned back up and um, I'm teaching this fall too. So there's that, uh, but, but I am, but I'm, getting back with it and trying to get ahead, but it's been a struggle. Feel free to advertise in the uh, main Sword and Sandal Cinema Group. There's like 3,000 plus aficionados of the genre there. Um, sometimes I catch your stuff, sometimes I don't. I, I, I kind of like informally look through my feed every day for a little while and I, mm -hmm. I act on what I see, but I don't see everything uh, certainly. Uh, like say I caught the uh, Alan Steele movie, so I promoted that wherever I could think of uh, promoting it. Uh, but if you do anything sword and sandal uh, related, and your site is certainly a big chunk of it is uh, sword and sandal cinema related, feel free to put it there and uh, bring people to your group because uh, well, great. Again, there's only one you and your uh, your work is uh, I iconic and legendary. Well, well thank you. Um, I, w when it comes to the update, uh, my, my goal is to have everything done by February 1st, because that'll be the 25th anniversary of the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I would like for it to all be, be you know, shining like a dime. Um, I, I should have the actor pages done, depending on you know how crazy the semester is in the next couple of months. But I, I have a few front pages that, that need to be redone as well. And then I want to go back through and do some tweaking with graphics. Um, you know, some things uh, I'd like to spend a little more time on, you know, graphic-wise, uh, just to get just to freshen the website, give it give it a good facelift. Well, I mean, the, 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 what you've done the, so far is excellent. Well, but the, the logo stays. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I, I got that right once, so I'm never doing that again. Uh, but but there's some other things that I, I want to. You know, improve the look of it and functionality too. I, I want it. I don't want it to be you know, just looks. I want it to, to work to work well. And so far, I've been happy with the update. I, I think it looks a lot better. Um, I think you can you see the graphics better. I, I've tried to tighten up uh, you know, the, the writing of it. I've added tons of new pictures, um, lots of new photos, and I've improved some of the old ones that uh, were you know kind of of lesser quality. Uh, I've uh, you know, redone some of those and they look far better. And you're also putting trailers, you said, and I know you showed daily movie as well. Uh, we, we've got a movie of the day every day, uh, but on each actor page where I can find them, uh, I will post uh, trailers, one or two, 
of that actor's uh, films. And there's the, the, the nice old trailers that lasted about two and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. The ones where you really get a sense of the film. Uh, if there are television performances uh, that are, are archived online and, pub and in, in the public domain, uh, I will also post those. Now, that's kind of rough you know, with, with peplum actors, uh, but with some of the other sections on my site, uh, there's a surprising number of people who have uh, public domain um, episodes of uh, anthology series from the 1950s and you know, other TV shows. Uh, some of them had their own shows that are public domain. Uh, so I'll run those. And then I'll also have um, at least one, uh, one film of theirs as well, if it's something that's available. Uh, for some actors, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll take Gordon Mitchell, uh, for instance. You know, a lot of his films are public domain. So I actually have it commented out, but but in my HTML, you know, I have you know like six or seven of his films, you know, preloaded. So if I want to change one, I can just go in, pull the comments out, and then it pops up as as the uh, you know movie uh, for that page. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm finding new stuff every day in archive.org. Uh, and um, the, the quality seems to be getting better. I mean, some of the old films, the old creaky, which I love, but, but some of the old creaky 19, late 1920s, early 1930s movies are, are hard to watch because they're in such bad shape. Uh, and, and the, um, you know, the audio uh, is kind of hard to listen to. It, it, it's more crack and hiss than it is um, vocal performance. You know? uh, but um, you know, with with a lot of the movies that we talk about, you know, a lot of it's the sweet spot, you know, the fifties and the sixties uh, for, for especially for driving films. Um, you know, so many of those are public domain, and I, for one, am uh, you know, eternally grateful that that so many of the peplums are public domain, and in and in, in pretty good shape, you know, some of them, except for Gordon Scott's movies, which are which look terrible. Um, you know, they're just in bad condition and it breaks my heart because he's you know one of my favorite actors yeah that that is a problem a lot of the old films what exists is very difficult to watch i've even mm. seen uh, uh like composite films made up of uh, english translation with uh italian original added to it mm -hmm. uh, display more of the movie and sometimes they'll put subtitles and sometimes they won't you know, I, I, I don't mind uh, watching a film with subtitles, but the only issue is that I have to sit down and watch it. I, yeah. I, can't, you know, I can't wander off you know, and still listen to it. Uh, you grab something out of the kitchen, you, you, have, you have to sit there and watch it so you can read you know, the, the text. Uh, and that, that's the only you know, detriment, drawback to it. Uh, sometimes it is fun not to hear the dubbing, though, and, and to actually read um, the, yeah, the text and the, tra the translation of it. Uh, you know, depending on which language it was translated from, you know, sometimes things can, can get lost, you know, in translation um, or get lost in the shuffle, unless there's somebody who was really thinking uh, while while they were keying it in, which is pretty rare. And sometimes but, you know, speak, titles have nothing to do with what's being said. I remember in Greece as a young man, that, yes, that's true. To see English movies and reading the Greek subtitles, and uh, many times the Greek subtitles have changed the story. It becomes a different story uh, when read through the subtitles than it actually is on the screen. But the people who are watching it can't understand the original language, so they don't know. Well, and you know what? While we're on this topic, uh, talk talking about subtitles and dubbing, something I, I should have mentioned earlier is that uh, Mimo Palmara owned a dubbing company. Oh, wow. Uh, which dubbed um, films into Italian language. And it was a, an ongoing concern um, from the 1960s up until about the year 2000. And it was, he was one of the people who dubbed. Uh, and I thought that was a really cool you know, footnote about him that he, you know, worked behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera. And he was a, a very, he was a you know, handsome guy. Um, you know, looked very, for lack of a better word, looked very Italian. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, in great shape. I mean, he, he wasn't, you know, built like Steve Reeves or Reg Park. Uh, more like, um, what would you say, Richard Harrison? You know, probably okay. 
the, the leaner, you know, uh, but, but like I said, you know, in great shape. Um, and uh, I think that's why he was often, you know, uh, second banana or, or sometimes the antagonist uh, in a lot of the Peplum films that he did. Uh, but, but I thought that was really an interesting piece of information that I didn't know about Nino Palmara is that he had owned, you know, a, a company that dubbed films into Italian language. So that was really cool. I've known a few actors, a few um, you know, English speaking actors who uh, did that in Italy, but they would dub, you know, uh, English you know, right. uh, lines uh, for uh, the films that were being made in Italy. Um, my, my, our old friend, Eric Kincaid, uh, who was in beach movies in the sixties, did some of the dubbing. Uh, he spent, I think, um, like a long summer, maybe even six months, uh, in Italy, uh, trying to get a singing career off the ground. And in order to eat, he dubbed movies and Aaron could do, he, he was, he did fantastic voice work but later in his career. Um, he uh, did a lot of uh, cartoon voices and, and he could mimic other celebrities pretty well. Uh, he could do different things with his voice, very creative um, and would have been perfect, you know, to, to dub, you know, some of these. I, I, he didn't, he couldn't remember which movies he had done because he was you know, doing it. To, he was singing for his supper, you know, essentially. Uh -huh. uh, and, and was doing it to uh, you know just uh, you keep a roof over his head and food in his mouth but um, he said he enjoyed it said he had a good time with it and I'm sure he I'm sure he loved putting on the you using different accents for different characters and such that would that would, that would have been him he would have loved doing that it sounds like a lot of fun uh, he, I was, he was a lot of fun he was really a really interesting guy yeah I've only met a handful of people who did voice work and they seem to really enjoy it well, you know, if you can, I can't, I can, the only other voice I can do beyond mine is Donald Duck, you know, so um, I really, well, that, that's actually true. Uh, I can do Donald Duck and I can do Brian and that's about it. <laughs> um, but I admire people who you know, can, you know, mimic what other people sound like, especially if it's, you know, somebody with a very distinctive you know, voice. Um, and you, you imagine all the fun that you could have you know, <laughs> at other people's expense. But, uh, but uh, you know, like I was saying, Aaron uh, could do all different kinds of voices. Uh, he did an impressive Betty Davis impersonation. Uh -huh. he, he sounded like elderly Betty Davis, you know. But still uh, but, but, but all you know, spot on, yes. And he, he, do, he could do a lot of people, really. Anyway, you know, going back uh, to Mimo Palmara, you know, and uh, I'm going to nominate him for uh, Peplum actor with the most titles. Uh, he, he did way more than anybody else. Like I said, he's in seven of Steve Reeves movies. He was in Hercules. Um, he was in. Um, let, let, me, let me see. Uh, he did uh, Ken Dar the Invulnerable and Goliath and the Sins of Babylon with Mark Forrest. With uh, Gordon Scott, he was in Goliath and the Rebel Slave. With Reg Park, he's in Hercules and the Captive Women, one of my favorite Reg Park movies. Of course, yeah. I, I, like all of Reg, I like all of Reg Park's movies, to tell you the truth. He, did, he was in The Colossus of Rhodes uh, with Rory Calhoun. I've got a picture of Rory Calhoun uh, in the Rory, Rory Calhoun page on my website. Um, and it's from that movie, and Nemo Palmara is just right here, yeah, just right over his shoulder uh, in full view. He did, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, but he did two movies with Roger Brown, uh, Three Swords for Rome and The Ten Gladiators. Uh, Dan Vadis was also in The Ten Gladiators. With Richard Harrison, he's in The Two Gladiators, and when uh, you know, the peplums died out. Um, that's when Nemo Palmar's career actually, it's when he, when he got some starring roles. Uh, so, I th so I think that's really cool. His first yeah. starring role yeah. was a spaghetti Western called Left Handed Johnny West. Uh, unfortunately, um, I, I don't know if this was his decision or somebody else's, but they build him differently uh, in spaghetti Westerns. Often his, uh, he was billed as Dick Palmer. For, for some unknown reason, I, not not quite sure. I well, I mean, yeah, 
I guess a lot of it's just what they consider to be audience xenophobia. I guess that's why also, why they change people's names. I don't know. Italians. This is my puppy. My puppy came to say hello. Um, oh, hey, hello. That, that's so Sophia, whose name means wisdom. Mm -hmm. And she's kissing me. Okay, yes, she, uh, she seems uh, to like dad a lot. Yeah, she does. She's daddy's girl. Um, but um, they seem to want uh, actors with American sounding names, even if they were Italian and it was an Italian uh, production. So Sergio Chiani became Alan Steele and uh, yes. Neil Palmer became Dick Palmer. <laughs> I could really see that. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, uh, Mark Forrest, who had an Italian name. The, the uh, Lou Dagny, yeah, he had an interest. I always thought, I always found that interesting that he was, you know, as American as anybody, but had to change his name to, to sound more white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, yeah. lest he be thought of as Italian, which, although he's starring in an Italian movie. Right. The, the conundrum of that's really interesting. Uh, trying to hide the fact that you're an Italian in an Italian movie. <laughs> that, that, that would really put you in an odd situation, wouldn't it? Existential, kind of yeah. Most, most yes, very much so. Because, you know, um, the Italians are, are generally you know, people who are very proud of their heritage. And mm -hmm. They have to hide it. Oh, my God, it must have killed him. At least the Italians have. Uh, we have a lot in this general area. Yeah, I, I uh, there are some things that are stereotypically true. Like I'm Greek, and yes, I dance. I dance uh, at important life events. So I put a picture of myself dancing at I a saw that, as a matter of fact. life event, and then I put a picture of a bunch of Greeks. So one Greek starts dancing in the street, and before you know it, you have anyone who's even remotely Greek dance dancing with them <laughs> and going around in circles. And so, yep, we do that. Now, was that uh, the photo that you uh, posted uh, of you dancing? Was that at a wedding? My son's wedding, yes. My, oh, my okay. son's wedding. So that, now, that, that hasn't been that long. It's no, just, it, just, it wasn't that long ago. It, it was a few years ago. And now uh, I'm a grandfather. He's given us a grandchild. So uh, I get to play grandpa in this lifetime. And uh, I'm enjoying awesome. it a lot. So you're enjoying it? Good. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, COVID made me miss a couple of uh, uh, life events uh, with my uh, grandson, but we'll make up for it now that uh, it's no longer as uh, uh, frightening as it was uh, not too long ago. Oh, it's still out there, though. I yeah, it's still out there and still dangerous, but... <clears throat> I, I, I won't name names, but uh, I have an acquaintance who has had COVID four times. Oh, wow. And it, it's somebody who works for me, actually. Um, and it's a younger person, and fortunately, it hasn't. I mean, it, it, it has made this person ill, you know, but but not with long haul COVID or anything like that. No, you know, intubation or anything had to be done. Uh, but but, I, but everybody I know who's had it says that it it really lays you low for about a week. Yeah, and, and we still wear masks and socially distance, except for but, like uh, today, yeah, yeah. The, the event was outside. Uh, it wasn't really mm -hmm. a big cell joining uh, the two committees I was promoting, so I didn't expect uh, to have a phenomenal amount of people at the table. So I stayed without the mask. But usually, uh, even when I'm lecturing, I put the mask on. I don't do that in the classroom because they're barely listening to me anyway. So. <laughs> So I, I want to be able to project my voice. Uh, and the classroom that I'm in, uh, it, I hate the layout. It's horrible. But all the tables, there are five tables and five chairs at each table. So anyway, um, each, all the tables are surround the periphery of the room. And the you know instructors uh cabinet uh where where the pc and the, and the uh, monitors are and all that stuff and, and the sound system and, every, and everything are in the corner so from where you, you the podium is you know where where all the av stuff is you can't see the screen you know the the, the main screen for the room now each table has its own screen boot 
but you can't see the main screen. So you have to get out from behind the podium and then walk over to the main screen if you want to talk about anything that's on it. I don't know who laid that room out, but it's a disaster. Fortunately, though, it does keep me away from, from people. So you know, I, I don't, I think I am relatively some well not. I maybe am sort of somewhat safe in the room. <laughs> uh, but but knock on wood, I haven't had COVID yet. Yeah, I haven't either. I had something that might have been in early, really early form of COVID before we were aware that there was a pandemic. I had like the weirdest flu I'd ever had. It knocked me out for maybe four days. Like mm. nothing knocked me out. And I've had pneumonia before. This was worse than having a pneumonia. That does sound interesting. Yeah, yeah it, but, it, but it was that does uh, sound more like COVID symptoms. Yeah, back then nobody knew about COVID or the, we had a pandemic looming or anything. It's just mm -hmm. I got like really sick with something unknown, and it, it passed. Like four days later, I was fine. Uh, but for the four days that I had it, uh, I, I was I, I didn't want to leave bed for any reason, uh, and I wound up uh, like not leaving bed unless I really had to go to the restroom or eat something mm -hmm. uh, or shower, uh, but. Uh, uh, that nothing has ever laid me out like that. Even pneumonia, when I had pneumonia and I went to the doctor, they said, how are you standing? You know, so I was able to deal with the pneumonia. This I couldn't deal with, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, la about a month ago, I caught a cold. Um, I was working in a different city uh, and working with the public and caught a cold. And the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, I've got COVID. You know? uh, but I didn't have COVID. I had a common yeah. cold and it ran its, you know, two week course. And it wasn't even a bad, it wasn't a great cold, but it wasn't a bad cold either. And oh, wow. then uh, Greg had it too. Uh, so we were both working uh, in another town. So probably got it from the same person. I don't know. But it took a little while to get over it. But, but at first, like, uh, first thing that crossed my mind was, well, it's COVID. <laughs> Uh, and a horrible time to get it because we were doing welcome week at, at the university where I work and I was having to drive back and forth uh, between the two towns where I was working. Um, it would have been a bad time to have COVID. And um, I was able to get through it, you know, with, with the cold. Yeah, I got, I got run down, but, but I was able to get through it. I'm glad that it wasn't COVID. And, uh, Me too. Much. Um, I'm starting something new also, um, and I'm starting with Barry Wen's uh, uh, art about Alan Steele. Oh, yes. Yeah, Barry Wen occasionally posts something. He, he drew a painting and sometimes a cartoon, mm -hmm. you know, so he has like different styles of art. He's a musician. Uh, so um, we're going to do a gallery uh, with uh, his uh, art, like putting pictures up uh, in a Facebook group. And then I'm going to interview him and we'll have the interview there. And it'll be like a gallery. You know, you can get in. Uh, the group, it'll be an open group and you can walk around, you can't change anything, uh, but you could walk around and listen to the interview. And I'd love to do, after I figure out all the kinks, uh, um, you know, uh, in doing that, uh, I'd like to do a gallery with you and your collectibles or you and Greg's collectibles. Oh, cool. So, mm -hmm. so you'll put in pictures, as many as you'd like, uh, and then we could do an interview just on your collection and have it there like a mini museum and, you know, you can go and they can listen to the, to the interview about it, and then they could go around and, and look at it. It'll be there for as long as Facebook is there. Well, you know, interestingly, uh, we've been decorating for Halloween. Um, we're so not. We have Halloween decorations all, all over the place so still. I've seen some of Athena's posts, so, <laughs> so I thought she, I thought you guys were probably decorating for for the season. Uh, and we've been doing it uh, now for probably the past I don't know a week or so. Um, and every year I keep saying we've got too many props. I'm not going to buy anything. And every year I buy stuff. Same here. <laughs> I've cut down a lot, but I still buy stuff for my collections. Well, it's hard to find stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You're mostly relegated to you know, Spirit Halloween or uh, Halloween City, you know, one or the other. And um, other than that, uh, like the, the stores that I've been to are, you know, in this part of the country haven't had a whole lot. Um, I probably Michael, found more, probably found more big lots than anything else. Michaels has a, a lot of interesting things and she belongs to a group. I can get the, I can get her to send it to you where there's people all over the place 
telling which stores the Halloween stuff popped in and what's popped in. So you, you can monitor your area. And if something that you really want pops up, you can go there and get it before, before it's all gone. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, I've got, to tell you the truth, we've got so much Halloween stuff that we have no business buying more of it. Uh, but we always do. Um, and uh, we um, have our uh, Halloween stuff in two different locations in the house. Uh, the, the stuff that's temperature sensitive, we keep in the garage, uh, in storage. The garage is heated and air conditioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the stuff that's not so so much you know, temperature reliant uh, goes in the attic. And I got to get in the attic this weekend and pull some of the uh, outdoor stuff down. We have a similar system with attic and basement uh, as well. Instead mm -hmm. of garage, we don't have a garage, uh, but we have a basement. So some stuff winds up uh, in the attic and some stuff in the basement. Mm -hmm. Now, our time is over. And again, I can, I can continue indefinitely, uh, but I don't know if you have anything to do or uh, if you want to wrap up. I, I leave that to you. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up. OK. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brian, for another informative and entertaining uh, conversation. Uh, and I'm looking forward to doing uh, uh, the, the things we uh, spoke about. Uh, wait, my dog just wants to kiss me. <laughs> Good girl. Um, uh, in the next uh, couple of months. So there'll be more segments of uh, Sword and Sandal Cinema with Brian Walker. And we will have an exhibit uh, from his wonderful uh, collection in the very near uh, future definitely this year so I'm looking, forward to yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to your next uh sword and sandal cinema show as well well thank you hercules i appreciate it and i believe i'll see you on thursday for retro sci-fi cinema am i correct or is that next week i you know i haven't checked i thought that was next week it um, might very well be next week i'm uh yeah, but, but I, I, I will look just to be sure all of a sudden and i'm not complaining this is a good thing all of a sudden, I have gigs again. There's like gigs popping up all over the place. So I'm still trying to oh, sort, great. sort through that. So I lost track of uh, time. I know I'm a few days ahead of time, but I didn't remember if it was this Thursday or next Thursday. But thank you for stringing that out for me. Uh, and I'm, so I'm looking forward to next week. Okay, me too. Okay, my friend, be well. How can people contact you? How can they find the legendary drive-in? And what do they have to look forward to in the days ahead? Well, don't be afraid afraid to uh, visit the drive-in, even though uh, parts of it are under reconstruction. Um, I, I try not to, I try to keep the um, uh, offline uh, pages down to a minimum. Uh, I, I can usually transfer them over pretty quickly. And you can find it at brianstriveintheater.com. And if you want to interact with me through social media, um, please visit Facebook, and because that's where I'm most active, and uh, search for Brian Strive theater on Facebook. Thank you again so much. Thank you, Greg. Uh, and uh, um, until next time, be well. And uh, this will be on uh, YouTube by tomorrow morning, uh, I'm hoping and guessing. Uh, and until that time, everyone, joyous journeys and amazing adventures. Have a good evening. You too.